Hi, I'm Emma Sutherland and this is Lauren McDonald. Welcome back to Studio U, week three on the gut health. It's treatment week. So Lars, tell us a little bit about how you know you had some things going on with Charlie in relation to gut health. So for those that don't know, my daughter is Charlie, who's now 14 months, but yeah, we did. So we didn't realize at the beginning of um, her life, she had what we then discovered was a dairy intolerance. And it wasn't until she was about four months and where she ended up in hospital with impacted bowels. Now my papa was breastfed, but was also top up fed with a formula, which was a whey based formula or casein, had casein in it. And uh, so later on, we found out that this was the cause of her, her backup issues. Uh, and since then she has been taking, well actually since birth she was pretty much taking a probiotic but she, we changed to probiotic and she takes probiotics daily, she takes coconut oil daily and this is for the, uh, the medium chain triglycerides that are in it which actually help the peristalsic motion of the gut. I eagle eye her diet so she has zero dairy. Um, I have tried every probably month to give her a little bit and see what happens but we, we take two steps backwards with the bowel health. Um, she has very little gluten, uh, maybe she'll have a couple of pieces of organic rye bread maybe once or maximum twice a week, plenty of water and plenty of fibre. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a constant watch and it's a constant trial and error with the, with the Literally um, because I do understand also some intolerances, they say they can grow out of them so we do try but we haven't had that success yet. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. You know, I mean, two years after my gut stuff went on, you know, I'm still working hard on my gut health, and I think that is something that you never stop working on, um, and that you do have to be really vigilant about gut health. It's absolutely true. Yeah, and I guess what really what really hits home with me is that that what Emma mentioned in episode one, I think it was, that by the age of three, your child has the the the, the foundations of their microbiota and their, their gut health set up for the rest of their life. And um, I certainly don't want my little girl going into the rest of her life with uh, an unhappy gut. It's just, um, from what we see in clinic, it's not worth it. No, absolutely not. Yeah, so when you want to treat the gut and make it happier, let's look at some key protocols. First, we want to heal the gut lining and treat the inflammation that's found there. We want to avoid what harms, which is gluten, casein, additives, toxins. And then we want to give what heals, so nutrients like probiotics and omega-3 fatty acids. Speaking of omega-3, I also forgot to mention my little girl Charlie does take a cod liver oil daily, which she loves yeah. for the inflammation <laughs> side of things. So, All right, firstly we want to fix the metabolic and nutritional deficiencies. These are magnesium, calcium, iron, zinc, vitamin T, and look at some liver detoxification. Treating problems such as enzyme deficiencies, poor stomach acid, gut motility, food intolerances, parasites, bacterial infection, fungal infection, and heavy metals. There's so many things to look at. Yeah. Let's look at some food. So several studies have linked the Western diet to poor gut microbiome health. You know, factors such as continuous stress, not enough, not enough fiber, too many trans fats, too much processed sugar, starch-based carbohydrates, they all are to blame because they fuel the pathogenic bacteria and they basically crowd out the good guys. So look, it's not only antibiotics that can ne negatively affect your gut health or gut bacteria, but also processed foods, undiagnosed gluten and dairy intolerances, refined sugar, and anything that can lead to stress will cause gut dysbiosis and possibly leaky gut. So let's look at resistant starch. So you can really enhance your gut health by resistant starch. It's a type of starch that fuels the good bacteria and promotes a happy gut. It can improve your insulin sensitivity too and make you feel satisfied for longer. So add things like beans, slightly green bananas, a very high resistant starch, potato, barley, brown rice, corn, legumes and oats to your diet for a hit of resistant starch. So if you can't eat these foods, Try some raw potato starch instead. It contains about eight grams of resistant starch per tablespoon, and you can just add it to a smoothie. To increase the amount of resistant starch in food, cook it, then allow it to cool and have it at room temperature. So currently, the average Australian consumes about mm, six grams of resistant starch a day, but you actually need to be consuming around 20 grams. 
Research shows it's highly anti-inflammatory and scientists currently are exploring its role in cancer prevention. So I want you to think of resistant starch as a superfood for your gut. Start including pre and probiotic foods in your diet. By including pre and probiotic rich foods, you can help keep your gut bacteria happy. From Germany, we have things like sauerkraut, then there's kimchi from Korea, and many countries have enjoyed the benefits of these fermented foods for many years. So these are the vegetables that have been lacto-fermented with bacteria, creating a powerful food which is rich in prebiotics and probiotics. This will result in a happy gut, happy digestion, and very healthy bowels. Bone broth is another superfood for the gut. We love bone broth. It's extremely rich in gelatin, which is perfect for healing and sealing a leaky gut. So let's talk about some other nutrients that will support the, your physiology um, for a healthy gut. So these include things like zinc, glutamine, essential fatty acids, probiotic therapy, and... And it's really favorite. important, yeah, to love your liver because a congested liver causes toxins into the gut. Really important to do a thorough cleanse every single year. When we're looking at lifestyle, it's so important in relationship to gut health. Mindful eating is very, very key for this. Supporting your detoxification pathways by keeping your liver happy is also very important. So that's it for week three. Now remember how important it is to create a holistic framework surrounding your gut health. Uh, please go over to our Facebook page, like the graphic on today's episode, Comment one key learning that you've had from today and um, stay tuned for week four, which is all about action plans and implementing what you've learned over the last three weeks.